Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Morning Prayer on this second Tuesday of Easter in the commemoration of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. For those of you who use the Book of Common Prayer to pray the office, today's Psalms are going to be 44, 45, and 46, beginning on page 645, and the canticles are 13 and 18 on pages 90 and 93. Since there is an option of using the Pascha Nostrum throughout Eastertide, in our app, if you see the button Venite, just click on it. It'll take you to Jubilate. Click on it again. It'll take you to Christ our Passover, which, we'll, which we will be doing today. A bit about Dietrich Bonhoeffer before we begin. I urge you to take a look at his <clears throat> hagiography in the app provided for by my community, the Brother of St. Gregory. This is from James Kiefer's Hagiographies. Bonhoeffer was born in 1906, son of a professor of psychiatry and neurology at the University of Berlin. He was an outstanding student and at the age of 25 became a lecturer in systematic theology at the same university. When Hitler came to power in 1933, Bonhoeffer became a leading spokesman for the Confessing Church, the center of Protestant resistance to the Nazis. He organized and for a time led the underground seminary of the Confessing Church. His book, Life Together, describes the life of the Christian community in that seminary, and his book, The Cost of Discipleship, attacks what he calls cheap grace, meaning grace used as an excuse for moral laxity. Bonhoeffer had been taught not to resist the powers that be, but he came to believe that to do so was sometimes the right choice. In 1939, his brother-in-law introduced him to a group planning the overthrow of Hitler, and he made significant contributions to their work. He was at this time an employee of the military intelligence department. He was arrested in April 1943 and imprisoned in Berlin. After the failure of the attempt on Hitler's life in April 1944, he was sent first to Buchenwald and then to Schoenberg prison. His life was spared because he had a relative who stood high in the government. But then this relative was himself implicated in anti-Nazi plots. On Sunday, April 8, 1945, he had just finished conducting a service of worship at Schoenberg when two soldiers came in saying, Prisoner Bonhoeffer, make ready and come with us. The standard summons to a condemned prisoner. As he left, he said to another prisoner, this is the end, but for me, the beginning of life. He was hanged the next day, less than a week before the Allies reached the camp. The Lord is glorified in his holy ones. Come, let us adore him. It's our tradition and custom here at Church of the Atonement to light a candle, regardless of where we may be, signifying the presence of God in our midst. Mine has already been lit. If that's part of your practice, I urge you to go ahead and do that now. We'll take just a moment and begin with morning prayer on the second Tuesday of Easter and the commemoration of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Psalms 44, 45, and 46, beginning on page 645. We have heard with our ears, O God, our forefathers have told us. 
the deeds you did in their days, in the days of old. How with your hand you drove the peoples out and planted our forefathers in the land. How you destroyed nations and made your people flourish. For they did not take the land by their sword, nor did their arm win the victory for them. But your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, because you favored them. You are my king and my God. You command victories for Jacob. Through you we push back our adversaries. Through your name we trampled on those who rose up against us. For I do not rely on my bow, and my sword does not give me the victory. Surely you gave us victory over our adversaries, and put those who hate us to shame. Every day we gloried in God. And we will praise your name forever. Nevertheless, you have rejected and humbled us. And do not go forth with our armies. You have made us fall back before our adversary. And our enemies have plundered us. You have made us like sheep to be eaten. And have scattered us among the nations. You are selling your people for a trifle and are making no profit on the sale of them. You have made us the scorn of our neighbors, a mockery and derision to those around us. You have made us a byword among the nations, a laughing stock among the peoples. My humiliation is daily before me, and shame has covered my face. Because of the taunts of the mockers and blasphemers. Because of the enemy and avenger. All this has come upon us. Yet we have not forgotten you, nor have we betrayed your covenant. Our heart never turned back. Nor did our footsteps stray from your path. Though you thrust us down into a place of misery and covered us over with deep darkness. If we have forgotten the name of our God, or stretch out our hands to some strange God, will not God find it out? For he knows the secrets of the heart. Indeed, for your sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Awake, O Lord, why are you sleeping? Arise, do not reject us forever. Why have you hidden your face and forgotten our affliction and oppression? We sink down into the dust. Our body cleaves to the ground. Rise up and help us. And save us for the sake of your steadfast love. My heart is stirring with a noble song. Let me recite what I have fashioned for the king. My tongue shall be the pen of a skilled writer. You are the fairest of men. Grace flows from your lips because God has blessed you forever. Strap your sword upon your thigh, O mighty warrior. In your pride and in your majesty, ride out and conquer in the cause of truth and for the sake of justice. Your right hand will show you marvelous things. Your arrows are very sharp, O mighty warrior. The peoples are falling at your feet, and the king's enemies are losing heart. Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate iniquity. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh, aloes, and cassia. And the music of strings from ivory palaces makes you glad. King's daughters stand among the ladies of the court. 
On your right hand is the queen, adorned with the gold of Ophir. Hear, O daughter, consider and listen closely. Forget your people and your father's house. The king will have pleasure in your beauty. He is your master, therefore do him honor. The people of Tyre are here with a gift. The rich among the people seek your favor. All glorious is the princess as she enters. Her gown is cloth of gold. In embroidered apparel she is brought to the king. After her, the bridesmaids follow in procession. With joy and gladness they are brought. And enter into the palace of the king. In place of fathers, O king, you shall have sons. You shall make them princes over all the earth. I will make your name to be remembered from one generation to another. Therefore, nations will praise you forever and ever. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved. And though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam. And though the mountains tremble at its tumult. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be overthrown. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations make much ado and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord. What awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who, breaks, who makes war to cease in all the world. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea. His picked officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrew your adversaries. You sent out your fury. It consumed them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The floods stood up in a heap. The deeps congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil, my desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them, they sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. In your steadfast love, you led the people whom you redeemed. You guided them by your strength to your holy abode. The peoples heard, they trembled. Pang seized the inhabitants of Philistia. Then the chiefs of Edom were dismayed. Trembling seized the leaders of Moab. All the inhabitants of Canaan melted away. 
terror and dread fell upon them. By the might of your arm, they became still as a stone until your people, O Lord, passed by, until the people whom you acquired passed by. You brought them in and planted them in the mountain of your own possession, the place, O Lord, that you made your abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. When the horses of Pharaoh with his chariots and his chariot drivers went into the sea, the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them, but the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. Here ends the reading. A Song of Praise, Canticle 13, on page 90. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Prepare your minds for action. Discipline yourselves, set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. For it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. For all flesh is like grass and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord endures forever. That word is the good news that was announced to you. Here ends the reading. A Song to the Lamb, Canticle 18, on page 93. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. The Apostles' Creed on page 96, followed by the Lord's Prayer and Suffrages A on page 97. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, by the waters of baptism, you have renewed those who believe in you. Come to the help of those who have been reborn in Christ, that they may overcome the wiles of the devil and continue faithful to the gifts of grace they have received from you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Embolden our lives, O Lord, and inspire our faith that we, following the example of your servant Dietrich Bonhoeffer, might embrace your call with undivided hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all the assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We now come to the prayers on behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement and the wider church. You may offer whatever prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings you have, either silently or aloud. If you have a particular prayer request, you can put it in the chat feature, in the chat section of this broadcast, and I will do my best to get to it through the course of the prayers which are about to follow. And these are the prayers that began on Sunday, April 7th. For the sick. For those in any need or trouble, and for all those who have asked for our prayers, especially Gordy, Anthony, Robert, Paul, Jacob, Jolene, Jeremiah, Katie, David, Beth, Susan, Sean, Kate H., Jonathan, Devin, Matthew, Ron B., Judy B., Jerry C., Brad, Mary, Killian, Dennis, former President Carter, King Charles, Princess Kate, Mary, Arun, all with COVID-19, Elizabeth, Jim, Charlie, Edward, Kelly, Ann R., Bill, Scott, Connie, Larry, Carmen, Dwayne, Eleanor Francis, religious, Ken, Deacon, Thomas, Tom, and Greg, priest, Richard, pastor. For an end to war, remembering especially the people of Gaza, Israel, the West Bank, Sudan, Ukraine, Russia, Mali, Iran, and Yemen, for all victims of violence, assault, and crime, for all migrants and those seeking asylum, those struggling with depression, anxiety, or addiction, for all affected by the earthquake in Taiwan, for all healthcare workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica K, Larry, Karen, Lee, Carrie, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily, for all families and children in the city and state, for all expectant parents, and for all prisoners. For members of our military services on active duty, especially Celeste and Nate, and for Scott, serving as security in Iraq. For Paula, our bishop, Charles, our rector, Amanda and Dave, our wardens, for the members of our vestry, for all in Chiapas, Mexico this past week, I believe they returned yesterday, strengthening Atoma's partnership with St. Benedict's Parish, Alex, Alba, Charles, Cena, Aaron, Richard, and Father Charles. For the birthdays of Robert G., Tim Van Alstein, Leonard Caramella, Muiwa Awani'i, David Potter, and John Mulder, priest. For the wedding anniversaries of Steve and Zeke Rhinesius, Jason Oliveri, and Lydia Terlo. And we offer our prayers for the departed, remembering Joseph Tony Valdez, deacon, Cook County Clerk Karen Yarborough, Joe Flaherty, 
Tim Yeager, priest, Thomas Dumbleton, bishop, Edward Rodman, priest, the World Central Kitchen aid workers killed in Gaza, Rick Olson, Gladys Parker, and Holly Adam. And at the anniversaries of their deaths were John Dillahay, Laverne Fisher, Anita Cambron Rayleigh, Norma Aranda, Lily Laverne Librand, Dorothy Morrow, Dwayne Llewellyn Patrick III, and Dan Britt. And we offer this prayer for peace. God of peace, help us to be better peacemakers in the world. Give us a sense of openness toward the people we meet. Make all men and women witnesses of truth, justice, and brotherly love. Enlighten our rulers that they may guarantee and defend the great gift of peace. May all peoples on the earth become as brothers and sisters, and may long for peace blossom forth and reign always over us all. Amen. The General Thanksgiving on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. May the God of hope. Fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> that concludes morning prayer on the second Tuesday of Easter, and we commemorated Dietrich Bonhoeffer today. Thanks so much for being here with us. We're here every morning at 8.30 a.m. on Google Meet for morning prayer. As it is Tuesday, there's a Mass today at 12.15. We have evening prayer on Google Meet also at 5.30 this evening. On Wednesday, we have a Mass at 7 p.m., Thursday at noon, and Friday morning at 7.30. Saturday, the Rosary at 9.30, followed by the Healing Mass at 10. And on Sunday, back to our usual round of services at 8, 9, and 11. Have yourself a great day, everyone. Stay safe out there. God bless.